So it is the first week of Q2, guys. And starting off the week, uh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, markets are not really liking it right now. Markets are absolutely not liking it right now. So this is, uh, this is quite an interesting situation that we are in. Now, granted, markets did fall today. However, in reality, I mean, it, they need to fall like another 20% just to get back to what we were at the, what, the end of 2023. So it's not like we're anywhere near all-time lows in the slightest. However, I honestly, I just foresee this as a breather. I honestly just foresee this as a breather. And remember that we do have earnings coming out in the next few weeks, right? Maybe even like a week and a half, if I'm not mistaken. 10 days, right? 10 days, it'll be um, April 12th, which is when <clears throat> the bank earnings actually come out. So a lot can happen. And I foresee this thing continue to go up a lot, actually. Seeing that when it comes to the revisions, we're starting, we're still seeing massive sway to one side, and it's mainly to the positive. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We also got news in regards to Jolt's numbers coming out and even that of uh, Fed members talking and oil. Now, in regards to all of that, I do want to, well, I guess in regards to oil specifically, um, I also want to talk about more proof as to how Gen Z is completely screwed because I I was watching Tim Pool today and one of the his later videos literally showed, he literally talked about Something that we have talked here on the channel so often and have actually given you guys proof that, well, Gen Z can't afford the house anymore. And it sucks because a lot of people, mainly the older generation, saying, well, no, Gen Z is just lazy. It's just like, no, 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 no. It, it's starting to become more mainstream. The fact that it's, it's becoming nearly impossible at this point, right? It really, really is. And it, the fact that it's becoming mainstream... I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So we're going to talk about that today. But with me, of course, I have. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, exhausted, but I have a nice drink next to me, so I'll be fantastically fine. At about now, what kind 20. of drink are we talking about? See, you can't just say drink and not specify the drink. What? Whiskey, of course. Oh, OK. See, OK. I See, I, I prefer my coffee, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, says the guy that coffee doesn't affect them. But that would be also true. That would be also true. I, I can drink coffee. In fact, I have drink coffee, drank coffee at like right before falling asleep, and I fall asleep just fine because I am a, I'm a lunatic like that. So, I really talk about all of this stuff today. Well, better question would be, uh, have you been living under a rock? Yes, thoroughly. Like okay. Thir well, I'll put it like this. So, like, the most exposure I just had to the market was me... Putting a trade on 20 minutes ago, me recording the video for tomorrow, and then looking at the news. That that I've been exposed for the last 20 minutes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, guys, we're going to talk about all about this today. And even something that I didn't even realize occurred, and I literally found out, what, like 10 minutes ago? Uh, right after, actually, right after I made the thumbnail uh, for the live stream, in that UNH just fell to like 6%. Really? Um, oh, yes. And the reason for it is actually kind of interesting. I, I don't even know the reason. I, you know, I, I just, I saw the comment on the video. Uh, I'll pull it up when we get to that section. That'll be towards the end of the stream, though. Uh, and I decided to look up news about it. And I got to say, we got to read it together because it's very esoteric. So, yeah, guys. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. So, we're going to talk about all about this today. Now, before we get started, of course, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube as well as a Rumble. We are still dual streaming. So, Mike, please, no hard R word. That would be okay. greatly appreciated. Um, but I just, I just looked up UNH. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So, <laughs> like... Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say for now. I'll, I'll wait till we get to that part, but yeah. wow. Yeah. So guys, of course, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on X. And again, we stream. Well, if you guys are here, you, you know exactly when we're streaming. 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Mike, earnings is coming out soon. So get ready to stream every single day when those Thank earnings... Thank you for rubbing 
Thank you for rubbing that salt right into like the gaping wound as well, is healing. Well, it's healing from what? From from the rumble partnership? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, you knew it was I'm coming. Having, hold on, I need to have a drink. You're bringing back PTSD. Oh, come on. That wasn't that bad. We don't have to stream two hours. At least, you know, at least right, we have that good part of it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Now, before we get started, of course, let's do a quick prayer because, man, I don't even know what to make up things anymore. I really, really don't. So let's do a quick prayer, guys. Again, you know, Easter just passed. Uh, to be specific, Resurrection Sunday. I don't even like saying the word Easter. Resurrection Sunday. And it's the least we could do. It really is the least we could do. So... Heavenly Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, blessed are you, Dad. Blessed are you. I really do hope that you give us the knowledge to, to traverse what we're about to talk about today. And I really do hope you give us the strength as well to, to, to I guess, overtake what's going to, what is currently happening and what will happen in the future. Because things do not look good. And it's always darkest before the dawn, but you're at the helm, so we trust you. In your precious name I pray, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. All right, guys. So, here's the news. Here is the news for today. Slow start to second quarter continues, though NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow end off session lows. Very, very interesting. Very, I love, I love the title. I love the title. That, what? That's just like a slow start. I'm like, wait, so markets up 14% is low for the so, quarter so, so start for the quarter right i mean the quarter's only been having two days right so in two days like, okay so so what are you expecting 80 percent return market from now know, on oh my god i, I know I the answer is yes but yeah i know yeah they just expect it to just continue to go up um actually funny thing about this so robin hood is saying on rumble nobody can afford the house everyone is screwed not just your generation yeah but the thing is yeah. is that most of most of the boomers and Gen X already own one. Um, I was just mainly saying in regards to you know millennials and and Gen Z, right? So because we're we the- don't have a base. Well, it, it's a mix, right? So the older generation has people that are not well off, right? But it also has a good proportion of people that had starts that they can build off of, right? So right. it's more about the baseline percentage. Gen Z has got handed basically the worst deck of cards. A pick and a poke. And just keeps getting killed. Yes. A pick and a poke, essentially. And yes. uh and rich and rich on, on I, w- I, w- I want to talk about gold. I know okay. he I know I, the gold not just oil, yet. Not just and, yet. Um, we can get we can get all about that when we get into the housing part, since all of that's kind of oh, yeah. tied together. And then Freedom Otter, that's the name. Freedom Otter, greetings from the great Ottoman Empire. <laughs> oh, Otherman, <laughs> Otherman Empire, I'm sorry. Otherman oh, Empire. I read Ottoman too. I read yeah, Ottoman too. I read uh, Ottoman. Ottoman. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you oh, can okay, tell we're history sense. buffs. Yeah, pretty much. All I right, love so, the name though. Yeah, the name's actually great. I don't. I think I've seen you somewhere else in somebody else's stream, but I don't really remember if if you if you are on like some other gamers uh streams let me know cuz i think that's where i know you from regardless though let's take a look at what happened uh what happened today so us stocks on tuesday ended lower extending their losses for the fledgling second quarter fledgling second quarter ah be- because it's like it's only been 2 days new bird right hot indicators on manufacturing and jobs market along with a rally in commodities there's your gold by the way have weighed on sentiment blue chip dow fell the most among the three major indices sliding one percent so it actually recovered um, i'm reading this and it's basically it's basically recovered to close at 39,170 points the tech heavy nasdaq declined 0.95 percent to settle at 16,240 points but the benchmark s p retreated uh, a little bit less than three quarters of a percent to conclude at 5,205 points out of the 11 sectors eight ended in the red wall street mix uh wall street closed mix on monday as market participants returned from the long eastern weekend last friday inline core personal consumption expenditures pce which by the way i did live stream that as well as with powell's stupid stupid interview it wasn't speech it was an interview oh dear lord mike if you want to talk about that you know like in passing we absolutely can because that was the biggest pile of crap i ever heard in my life no I think, <laughs> worse than I the think fomc's the, uh, i think the fed members today topped him 
Okay, well, I don't know about the Fed members say, but uh, let, let, let's finish this up and then we could go on to the jobs and then, you know, that whole entire part. So, all right. So uh, this is coming off of the PCE. The Federal Reserve's per preferred inflation gauge was overshadowed by the release of the Institute of Supply Management's ISM monthly report in on manufacturing. The ISM data surprised markets by showing an expansion in economic activity in the manufacturing sector in March after a contraction of nearly one and a half years. How is that a bad thing? Right? Am I reading that? Am I reading that? Supply management. No, 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 no. no. It, they're saying a, the um, the ISM is like an index. Anything above fifty, you see good, which is like the manufacturing sector is expanding. Uh -huh. Versus if it contracts, um, or basically, huh. They said ISM manufacturing surprise markets by showing expansion in economic activity. So this is going up. Uh, yeah. Which. So the question is. Oh, uh, they um, they reignited fears of a uh, wage price spiral. Well, look That's at well, look at. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right because look at the following paragraph. The good news is bad news. Theme reflected in today's economic calendar as well. Factory orders in, in February rose 1.4% to $576.8 billion, higher than expected increase of 1% and reversing from January's fall of 3.8%. Moreover, the labor market continues to show signs of resilience after the latest job openings and labor turnover survey, I, aka JOLTS, showed the job openings edged up to five, uh, sorry, 8.756 million in February from 8.748 million in the prior month. This is what I just don't understand these people. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm about to start off on a rant. I can't believe I'm about to start off the straight on a freaking rant. You know what I'm gonna rant about? You know what I'm gonna rant about, uh, boy? They can't decide which is good, which is bad. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but the thing is they've been taught, okay, but they, is that really a surprise? It's been topsy-turvy land for the past year and a half. I guess, but like, but like it's, right. talk about, talk about, you okay over there? Yeah, I'm just saying that, like, at this point, that's how the market is, right? I've basically just come to terms with it. I'm like, you, but here's the like, thing: there I, is just, no I just look at the data, and I'm like, I'm just curious what the reaction is going to be because it's like flip a coin at this point. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That 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 is a fair statement. That's an absolute fair statement. I just love it because we're back to before. We're back to before where it was just like, oh back no, to good news is bad news. Bad news is good news. Correct. Correct. Right. We're absolutely back to that, and I. Sure. We're out of the uh, news is just good. Right. We're, we're like, you know, as of a few months ago, we started the trend of like, oh, okay, inflation's coming down. Well, actually, when inflation comes in, if inflation is slightly ticking down or even well, by we'll point one. We'll talk about that with oil. Well, well that no, no, no. But, but what I mean is, what, what I mean is, what I mean is, once we get inflation numbers, specifically CPI, um, if we get even a 0.1 decrease, markets are are then going to turn back their their narrative and say, "Oh no, wait, no, sorry, false alarm. This is uh, we're still doing a soft landing." So now, good news is good news again. So this is why. Yeah. I just the problem. Here's the too long didn't read version about crude. TLDR. There, there, there's no way you're getting a negative number. They can only be positive on the next report. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about some of these uh, some of these indicators. So, uh, so the uh, Nasdaq S and P and Dow move lower amid hot manufacturing data, specifically the jolts numbers. That's the main thing that occurred here. We already read most of this as well as the ISM, right? We we already read most of this. Um, However, what I mainly want to take a look at is this. Job openings roughly flat in February, with prior months print revised it down. Jolts. So. Jo or have uh, we job seen this before? Yeah, job openings was little change of 8.756 million in February, slightly trailing the 8.76 million consensus. So it's only down by what? Uh, 400? No, uh, 4,000? 4,000 jobs basically? Forty thousand or forty thousand jobs? Sorry, um, and edging up from the 8.748 million January, revised from 8.8. .8, wow! So the so the January one got revised down, and it still beat even the January one. The job openings rate stayed at 5.3 percent for the third consecutive month. The quit rate. Wow! I didn't even know this that day. I, but by the way, full disclosure: I rarely take a look at jolts. This is not my forte right here. It really, really isn't. My forte is mainly inflation, like the CPI, and not even PCE, just strictly CPI. 
So the quits rate came in at 2.2 for the fourth month. Wow, for the fourth month in a row, further suggesting a still resilient labor market. Uh, the rate of layoffs ticked up to 1.1 from 1% in the previous months. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics said on Tuesday, okay, so we are getting a little bit more layoffs, but only by nothing, essentially. Uh, reflecting on the report on in an expose, the RSM Economics Joseph Brasuela said, quote, the primary takeaway is there is 1.4 job availables for every individual looking for work. The American labor market remains historically tight. But do you know what that says to Jerome Powell? Mike? Mike, I think you muted your mic again. Hello? Mike? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I have to go blow my nose. Okay, no problem. No problem. So do you know what this tells uh, Jerome Powell right here? This primary takeaway is that there's 1.4 jobs available for every individual. Uh, keep the head underwater and don't do anything. Well, that and also the fact that um, uh, we still have uh, full full employment. Oh, sorry, yeah. not full employment, but... Um, what, We're achieving what? dual mandate. Right, exactly. They're, they're, they are, they're achieving dual mandate, which, by the way... In the stream that I did, guys, on Friday, uh, where, where I covered PC as well as uh, Jerome Powell with his interview, he said he said that as time progresses, the mandates are become the 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 two mandates are becoming more and more balanced, meaning that we are actually in um, a situation where essentially they're coming to equilibrium, basically, in a way. I don't yeah, really know what you know what that about. means. What? That, that essentially means that they're they they're kicking the can down the road, right? Like you can't they view better balance, right? So strong employment can weather they, they view okay. So you have a job that's growing job market, meaning there's competition and inflation's going up. But because you're earning more money, that means that inflation is counteracted by that. Right. And we can kind of like kick the can down the road further. It's it's an absolute like Pandora's box level of how tight you have to wind yourself to be in a pretzel to understand this man's thinking. And it's like, well, we're we're only we're only off target by a little bit. No biggie, right? I love the fact that you just said Pandora's box. That's actually a really interesting analogy. So, guys, uh, let's take a look at uh, the jolts numbers. So, we see over here that jolts came in at 8.756 million, uh, where before it was 8.748 million, and they were expecting 8.76 million. So, it came right under, it came right, right below that. But I think again, the revision that previous one was the one that caused markets to kind of jolt themselves for lack of a better term uh -huh. yeah that was my next question i'm like what in the world caused in fact let's take a look at the market i think on it to be transparent i think it was jolts shock them and then mester and gold and all all of them kind of just like threw more fuel on the fire mm -hmm. but was already starting mm -hmm. by saying like we're okay with sitting around doing nothing for a year and the oh. was like yeah wait read what? between the lines read so between wait. the lines so wait, 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 wait. So, so, so Bowman, Williams, and Mester all, all talk today, right? Yeah. And what did they say? So you want the two, the too long didn't read version is the rate, the pat to two percent is going to be a bumpy ride. Um, again, like the whole dual mandate thing. And we're we're not going to cut in the next meeting, but we still can cut this year. But the um. The data has to come in line if the economy expands as we predict, but we're okay with holding rates higher for longer and returning to a higher run rate of the federal funds rate than uh, previously. Wow. So, so essentially we can kick the can down the road for who knows how long. So did that change the CME tool at all? Because what you're basically saying Honestly, there is- Honestly, I don't even pay attention to the CME tool anymore. Well, I, I, look, it's a fun thing, right? It's, it's a fun thing to look at. But basically what just happened there is these guys or girls, I don't know which is a girl or a guy, uh, but what they're basically saying is, yeah, we're not gonna cut rates. We are go we're going to vote to keep rates the same for as long as we have to. 
Yeah, that's basically what they're saying. saying. They're basically saying rate cuts, rate hikes are off the table. But, but that does not mean that we have to cut rates next meeting. Like, we're going to sit here stubbornly, the same way we sat here stubbornly telling you transitory inflation. Yep. Which I'm getting a lot of vibes about that of not wanting to... I'm like, I'm just looking at oil, right? And I'm just say, sitting here being like, I'm we'll going to oil enjoy in just one seeing... I'm going to enjoy seeing Volker's 1970s mm-hmm. and 80s play yeah. out again. I'm well, like, huh, th- this is the exact same thing that happened last time. I wonder okay. what's going to happen next. We'll get to oil in just one second. Yeah, oil, yeah, gold. I, just, I love how they see it, right? Like, if you look at the narrative of how they're portraying, of uh, we're going to cut rates. When? We're going to cut rates. When? We said we're going to cut rates. When? I don't know. Not anytime soon. Right, not anytime <laughs> like, soon. And and like, and well, and we're also well, in five months. Well, and, and five that's months the thing later. too. Hang on, hang on. And that's the thing too. If what they're basically saying is a prelude, right, to um to the current situation, right, that they are clearly seeing ahead when it comes to specifically oil, as you said, that means that most likely my prediction will come true in regards to yeah. the fact that inflation is going to stay the same for about Six to nine months. Yeah. I don't know. I would say it could go up even. Right. No, but but that's what I'm saying. Like like slightly tick up. Right. Slightly tick up slash stay the same. But here is the CME tool, and the majority of people, sixty one point four percent, still believe that we're gonna get one rate cut in June. Again, so many inflation numbers could come out before then. And apparently, you even said that Powell's talking tomorrow, which is crazy. There's so, many, many Fed members speaking between now and June. Many, many reports. Many there. There's many bullets you have to dodge between and, and, now and then. And to, uh, tomorrow, we also got the ADP non-farm employment. Um, yeah, that's not the... I did. I did mention that in the video of what's tomorrow. But I'm okay. like ADP. I'm like even though oh, I don't Lord. like it and I find it to be absolutely horrible. Yeah. I think ISM is going to be more important, and I think Powell. This right here. Tomorrow this right here. Important. Look at this. You got Goldsby speaking, Powell speaking. Why is he speaking again? He just spoke on Friday. Granted, it was more of an interview. You know, it wasn't really a all, speech. All but. the bulls have to have to have to go back to him for their uh, for their uh, rate cut. Um, uh, you, what's it? Uh, euphoria. This is unnecessary. This is completely uh, well. Actually, you know what? You know what? No, it's not unnecessary. What happened when Greenspan came out month after month, week after week prior to 2008? It's true. That's not your like, yeah. You know that's how like if you live back then, Greenspan was talking every single week. Not only Saying, that, but the economy is strong. The mortgage is the bedrock of our economy. Nothing yeah. to worry. About. The banks are safe. Not only that, but you also got so you got Goldsby Powell, uh, Barr, and Kugler. Kugler? I can't pronounce his name to save my life. So, regardless, you have so many of them happening tomorrow. Oh, dear Lord. And on top of that, you got gasoline. You got, you know, heating oil. <laughs> oh, my OPEC goodness. Meeting. OPEC meeting? Where? Did yeah, you see that? Tonight. Oh, tonight. Is it really? And we got Barkin on Thursday. Mester again on uh, Thursday. Why Collins is this a thing? Friday. Why is this a thing? Uh, Go up. You'll you'll see. Um, you're on today. No, I'm on this week. week. Huh? I changed it to this week. I changed. I just changed it to this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you should be able to scroll now. Yeah. But we got Bowman on Barkin on Friday. So I'm like, I'm just looking at this. I'm like, huh? I wonder how we're gonna dodge this bullet. Wow. Wow. And payroll expectations are out. Another mester again. Yeah. Why are they all coming out? Why? This is it's so like strange. You have something, you, it's like you have something to hide. And and this Friday, non-farm payrolls, the official non-farm payrolls. Look at payrolls. expectations. Look at I private know. non-farm payrolls. I'm like 160 from 223 and then 205 no. and 225. What are you looking at? No, that's the private non- non-farm yeah, payrolls. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about payroll. Yeah. You're looking at over here, buddy. Non- okay. Non-farm payrolls right here. 205 and 275. Yep. Yep. So what happens if uh, 275 gets revised lower and then we come in at 200? Or if we just smash it out of the park. I don't know. Then again, remember, remember, it 
we don't know if the narrative's going to change of good news is just good or yep. bad is good, good like you know it could it could revert to bad is bad good is good right so you never know how that data is going to be interpreted because people are twisting themselves into a pretzel to basically confirm it's beyond their that, assumptions guy. based on their data no 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 it's beyond that it's beyond that it's it's i you know, if the, step one, if the data supports my conclusion, good. Right. Step two, if the data does not support my conclusion, change my conclusion so that the data supports my conclusion inevitably. It's straight and up gaslighting. Three, it's straight up gaslighting. Uh, and then step three, if the data does not support any of the above, ignore the data. Yep. Yep. It's straight up moving the goalpost until it until it um it it matches with your with your with your perspective sounds a lot like a sounds a lot a lot that sounds a lot like a political party that we know and love right <laughs> or oh, just all Lord. politicians or right right yeah or all pander, politicians. pander pander to whatever gets you the most amount of votes and money pretty much now before we move on though to the actual news speaking about politics uh that's a great segue let's take a look at chat because i don't know where rumble just popped 21 people watching y'all are crazy this thing was like a five and now we're up to 21 yo guys thank you so much for watching on rumble again we're from what i know of we're like this we're the only small uh economics podcast here on rumble i know that there's other people that do economic stuff but they're like massive right they're huge so that's huge tremendously big but you know we're we're a small we're just you know, it's just me and Mike that we're just trying to grow this channel slash company. So I really do appreciate it, guys. If you were to smash the like button, um, follow, and of course, share the stream. It really, really does help. Uh, so, Mike, take a look at YouTube or do you want to take a look at Rumble? I'll do Rumble. Let's see. It's okay. Kim Bemzel. Let's see. It says, uh, it's Kim. It's Kim. Oh, it's Kim. It's Kim Blums. Uh, it's Kim Blums. Uh, and then uh, Cuban Girl says hi, Ghost says hi, and then Ghost says he was trying to cover up his mess. So by so who? Who do you mean by pal. who? Who do you mean by probably who? Pal. Here's the thing though, what mess? Because he came out talking and he reiterated, Mike, bro, let me tell you something. Oh dear Lord. I was on that stream and I was, a, I was, a, that was a you perfect a moment. Huh? You needed a table. You I, needed needed a, a table. I needed a table to flip. I needed a table to flip. I was, a, I needed a table to flip. And the face cam because the little hair that I have left on my head, I was about to rip it off. Dear Lord, <laughs> dear Lord. I can imagine what Powell's saying because he knows he's screwed. He's saying basically you can. Uh, no, he's talking about Greenspan. Uh, yeah, but what's the difference between Greenspan and Powell? Well, it's, let me tell you. Same, to me, to me, I look at him the same way. You're trying to all the Fed members kicking the can down the road is the mental. Um, equivalent to we're screwed and we have no idea what we're doing so let me tell you what let me tell you the quick tldr when it when it came to powell on um on friday ready ready sure. the economy's strong explain to me how that works <laughs> he literally said that several times the economy's okay. strong inflation is heading down to two percent and if it continues we will cut rates three times this year that's the tldr Okay, so Greenspan in a nutcase, and then lie about inflation coming down by lie by omission, because you're omitting the fact that the latest two reports deep from what you're expecting, you're just kind of hoping that your reports can be fudged in a way that show that inflation's going down, but OPEC has a different agenda, so right. yeah, just tell a lie big enough until they believe it. Yeah. Um, and then on YouTube, we got Bassomatic. Hello, Bassomatic. We're going to try, my man. I know that the law in Canada, I believe, just came to be. Uh, we're going to try our best not to get banned so that way you can keep watching us. But at the end of the day, we really can't do anything. Um, and as uh, you he, do that, I'll be right back. Well, hey, this is... Oh, my... Okay, fine. Uh, so Bassomatic saying, Nutrien has started an uptrend. Any views on Potash? Potash? Potash. I don't know what potash is. Most people don't even know what it is. All right. Well, I just I just gave myself away right there, my guy. <laughs> I literally just gave away. I have no idea what that is. Um, let me know. Uh, if, is it a stock? If it's a stock, just throw down the ticker in the chat, and um, we'll take a look at it towards the end. Um, but also, guys, I completely forgot. I completely forgot. Um, I forgot. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the stream. Uh. We'll probably do this towards the end of the stream. 
we are going to release and I'll put it in the chat and then I'll probably put it in the in the link or in, in the in the description of the live stream. We're going to up or I'm going to release the uh, the Discord for the channel. It's not complete. But I, I I just don't really know what else to add. You know, we'll we'll add stuff as it progresses. Um, I don't even know how to do like a lot of stuff, but you know, I'll monitor it. If I see people being being terrible human beings, I'll ban them, right? I could just ban people out, right? So, you know, we'll release it though. We'll release it and um you guys will be able to have it. So I'll release it in the in the live chat towards the end of the stream, as well as I will put it in the link in the description as well. So ghost, there you have it. Um we're going to uh we're going to release your uh your your the Discord that you wanted. So yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Kimmy Girl says, good analysis. And then Ghostwalker saying, they're the same, but I was talking about 2008 Crisis. Well, yeah, 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 you're right on that one. I, I see what you're telling now. He was trying to cover up his mess in regards to the 2008 Crisis. Yeah, I mean, after saying that the housing market is is the bedrock of our economy that can't fail, and then it, just, it did just that. Powell isn't coming out that bold. However... The fact that he's saying, uh, oh, hey, Next Level Gaming, what's up? Thank you so much for stopping by, my guy. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, but the fact that he's constantly say, Ghost, the fact that he's constantly saying, uh, the fact that Powell's constantly saying, the commie's great, that is basically him, you know, him nailing himself to a wall, essentially, right? So he's not saying it uh, abruptly like Greenspan was. But he's still saying it, and a lot of people are calling major BS on that one. Um, so, so yeah. And uh, while I wait for Mike, dear Lord, uh, Potash is fertilizer, pink gold. Oh. Really? Yeah, I really do need to start the garden. You're, thank you for reminding me about that. I really do need to start watching some gardening v videos, man, because I just, I really, even though, even though I don't own a house, I really want to start like learning how to farm at least just have like a basic garden at least you know grow a couple of tomatoes or something uh the entire country of india cannot grow anything without potash all right i guess we'll uh i guess we'll take a look at that but can you uh can you tell me the um the ticker for that company N nutrient can you tell me the ticker basimatic and then we'll, we'll look it up afterwards okay mike are you here yet nope he is uh he is a uh, be a, a complete pleb. He's being a, a complete pleb. Oh dear lord. Um, I came to learn. <laughs> well, we're going to actually. Good thing you just stopped by because we're going to cover something right now that we've been trying to cover here on the channel. I do know we we have covered here on the channel a lot, a lot. And you know, I'm kind of salty. I'm kind of salty because you know what? I I hate to say it this way. I really do. But I'm kind of salty that we're not getting more views. Because we're the only ones, well, I want to say the only ones, but, we're, but we are one of the few ones actually covering it, and we just aren't getting traction when it comes to it. But I am glad that it's starting to become mainstream. I really am glad. Because what I'm about to show you guys is a, just, it's just another grain of sand that proves that Millennial and Gen Z in general, right? I'm speaking in generalities. Millennials and Gen Z got the short end of the stick, and in some cases, no stick at all. Because, well, we're about to get a little bit political here, even though we shouldn't. But you know, it's 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 part I'm of back. it. Okay, good, because I'm about to just um, I'm about, I'm about to get into the into the main story of today's live stream. You ready? Woo! All right, ready? Three, two, one. Mm. Bidenomics. Americans need six-figure salary to afford a median priced home what do you define as medium see here's my problem with this is that is that why haven't we been getting traction we've been talking about this for how long now mm -hmm. for a long, a long time well no i wouldn't say two years but like several months all right straight, straight up several months in fact read the read the subtitle over here i don't know if you guys can read that hang on let me just zoom in a little bit read that read that Mike, please. Sure. Let me actually click on it because I had it split. Oh, you are terrible the human study, being. I know. Uh, <laughs> the study reveals that the average home buyer needs to earn over 110 annually, gross or net question mark, to afford the medium home price in 22 states. Full stop. 
what was that live stream that we did during the Rumble partnership of where I specifically said, hey guys, in order to have the same buying power as 1963, you need to make roughly what? Remember 157,000? So let's just give it a range, 150 to 160,000. This is news? This is not news? <laughs> no, that's that's uh kick the can down the road a couple No, times. no, this is this is this is I'm glad that this is becoming more mainstream, right? I'm glad that people like Tim Pool are covering this. I'm glad that the Post Millennials covering this. But my goodness, like this is not rocket science. This is not rocket science. It really, really isn't. So I'm, <laughs> this is incredible for me. It really, really is because it, it, it's just another straw, right? It's just another straw that we were right, right? Also, Would you I like can me hear my, to add some more uh, hang on, fuel I can to hear, the fire? Hang on, I can hear myself in an echo on your end. All right. So just, you know, maybe move away from, from the mic or something. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, uh, we literally talked about this. In fact, I still have the spreadsheet. Let me just pull it up. Uh, I still have the spreadsheet of what I did because I was bored uh, that one <laughs> night. What? I love how you were saying you're bored. Yeah, I was bored. So I, I just decided to to take a look but, at uh, the... While you pull it up, I do want to mention something that... Um, while we're on the politics... Go on. But uh, I do actually, let me answer the original next level gaming question. By the way, great guy, great guy. Uh, he does, yesterday he played Sonic Adventure. I don't know if it's Mike okay. or if it's Peter, but I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's Mike. But yeah. But regardless, um, the interest, like, it could be to a household income of 110, right? Like when you're talking six to total family income. So you're basically, I don't know, because that's the thing. It's like the study could look at, people that are single it could look at like individual income but sure. really really it, it has to be household but the thing is like the median income is like 50 so you have two people earning the average income but then if you throw a kid in there and you throw anything else it just becomes car payments, very very difficult yeah car just, payments other bills emergencies and that kind of stuff and yeah, yeah 110 um, is very skewed i think in my opinion the study is looking at because the number we were getting, right, like and he's projecting it right now, of what you would have to be making, and essentially, it doesn't. The hundred and ten is more of a singular so person. Yeah. Study. Okay. So what I'm what I'm showing here, guys, is is the math that I did. I love it because when I showed this, somebody didn't exactly knew exactly. Somebody didn't know exactly what I was talking about. But basically, guys, is uh, this was several weeks ago. I basically took the median household income, right? Going back to 1963. Now, I, this data right here, this information right here, guys, is from Fred. Fred, unfortunately, uh, takes, the, uh, takes the median sales price for houses per quarter. So what I did was, and I don't know what's so confusing about this, I took the median housing price for Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 in 1963, and I averaged it out. I don't know. For some reason, somebody thought that I, I took, I I'm looking at an average instead of the median. I'm looking at the median. It's just, I don't have the total for the year. So I just went with the average of the median, if, if, if that makes any sense. Regardless, though, this median uh, housing prices for the whole entire year averaged out to be $18,000. This is back in 1963, guys. 1963. Should I put this in like, uh, in like uh, the, the slideshow format? So that way no, it's a little... Because it could screw up. It could screw... Okay. Um, so that's for 1963. Now, I also looked up, guys, the median household income in 1963 being $6,200. That Right? This is for the this is for the year, by the way. So the, this is for, for the entire year. So then I took a ratio. Basically, I took the average, the average of the median uh, housing prices, which ended up being $18,050. And then I took the median... Um, I took the median income and then I divided those two to get a ratio around 2.91, basically three. Okay. Then I did the exact same thing when it comes to 2022. I couldn't find 2023. So I just went with 2022 and the average, the average median sales prices for houses guys was $457,475. It's 500,000 now. So yeah. whatever number you're seeing here 
is actually your best case scenario. So this is right. Well, this was for 2022. So it was a little bit cheaper back then. But so this is the average of the median sell prices in 2022. Now, I then did the exact same thing. I looked at the median household income for the year, $74,580. <clears throat> Doing this ratio, we get 6.13. So let's say six. So for 1963, the ratio was what? Uh, 6.91. So let's just say three. And then for 2022, it was six, so double. Now, that really doesn't tell us much of anything, right? So what I decided to do then was, is okay, what would be the income right now that you would need to have a year, right? A year per household, um, median, right? Because it's all in medians, to have the exact same ratio of around three today, back in 1963. Basically, you would need $157,000. So let's give it a range 150 to 160, right? Let's give it a range 150 to 160 because it depends, right? It depends. This right here proves it. This right here just proves it. Oh, dear Lord. It kind of, I think they took, um, and the, I don't like how they're using the uh, 22 states. So it's a very cherry pick data in comparison to saying like 150K. Because if you just think about it, like median income, right? Average median income if you're 50K. Mm -hmm. Put together as a household yeah but the problem is what state is a singular person all like all this stuff not to mention but, taxes um, yeah yeah but like lo long story short it's unaffordable and oh, then yeah. you can't afford the down payment because remember 20 percent. you have to get 20 percent of that money so you're not just magically gonna fork up a hundred grand like, and, and we even did that remember we we did the whole thing of um of uh okay if we lower the yeah, interest even, rates even FHA, even fha you still can't but the problem right. is that you can't afford the monthly so you're 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 kind of up shit creek without a paddle either way you're basically and, yeah you're basically stuck between a rock and a hard place it's basically yep. what's happening there. i love um i love basomatic I'm, I'm reading the youtube chat yeah um rich and uh talking and him talking about uh uh commodities and stuff about uh potassium and that i gotta look into Not that potassium that, potash potash whatever um but uh i love your analogy we got such a long way to go on inflation yet guys so far that's been nothing inflation is the beach ball being held underwater <laughs> i'm gonna use that because you know i'm gonna use that and modify it because i always say the fed is holding the bank's head underwater i'm gonna use the beach ball as the fed is holding the beach ball underwater for the inflation i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna borrow your analogy because it's a fantastic analogy it is a fantastic analogy when, it, when, when they finally slip and then it pops out and smacks them right in the face yeah yeah tenfold right tenfold not only are they trying to bring it not only are they trying to hold it underwater but they're going further deeper so it's like it's increasing pressure basically oh yeah it's increasing the pressure. buoyancy effect is like the nah, i want to go up the buoyancy but let's actually read this a little bit because this actually goes this actually goes in a lot deeper so the u.s average how uh sorry the average u.s home now requires a six-figure salary to afford marking a significant increase compared to the pre-pandemic levels according to a study by bank rate the study reveals that the average home buyer needs to earn one hundred ten thousand dollars annually to afford the medium price once again we're back to the median right right? Uh, the median price in 22 states. This represents a substantial jump from January of 2020. Mike, can you read me this uh, This right here? When the average home buyer only needs to make approximately 75k in three... 46% increase. Yay! In four years. In four years, we went you know from 75... Hang on. In four years, we went from, hey, you just need to make 75,000 to afford it to now 110,000. The problem with this is, and again, this goes back to the fact that we can't afford it. Who is this mainly affecting? I understand guys that a lot of people are going to be affected by this, right? Robin Hood mentioned it at the beginning of the stream. However, who is this mainly going to affect? The younger generation? The people who are just starting to, to, to start the family or that want to start the family. Gen Z. Gen Z is essentially our age, right? So 28 and lower. Gen Z should begin forming families. Gen Z should begin buying homes, right? Gen Z should be doing all of these things and they can't, and they can't. And it's not to their fault. It really isn't. People say, oh, G Gen Z is lazy. Yo, this is, I just, I just showed you guys my math, right? So take my math as it will. That's why I said, give it a range, right? Just in case. But 
again, this, the, the fact that this is becoming mainstream news is, is incredible to me because it should become mainstream news. It really should. It really it should. should. Mainstream news many, many months ago. Well, we, 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 we broke it, right? We, us and, and maybe a few other people. I'm not going to say we were the first. But the fact of the matter is, is that Gen Z isn't lazy. We're demoralized, right? I'm not saying me. I love it because I say this at work and somebody always tells me, um, somebody always says, oh, you can't generalize. I'm like, I have to. I have to generalize. We're, I'm talking about an entire generation. I'm not talking about myself. I'm not demoralized. But when you talk about the entire generation, even the millennial generation, I would even lump into that as well. Everyone is. Huh? Every, literally, there's people in my um, work that are in their 40s that are demoralized. That's so millennials. Not, yeah, millen millennials, Gen Z, boomers, even. No, some that no, are yeah, but yeah, but it's not even to the ex dude. It's not even to the ex to the same extent, right? right. Millennials, fair, millennials fair. are over here becoming 25 years old, and we. You can't do anything. Now, I, I love it because Robin Hooder at the beginning said, uh, Mike owns a house. Yes, but when did you buy your house? Uh, two years ago. Right. So, you know, also you're in South Carolina. Yeah. So it's a it's lot. It's expensive here sometimes. Yeah, I, I guess, but it's not, you know, dude, my guy, uh, let me tell you, if you cannot buy a house here where I'm at in Pennsylvania for, if you want anything lower than 300000 you're in the inner city. You're in the slum lords. You're in the inner city. Seriously, anything under anything under three hundred thousand, you're essentially in the inner city, and, and or requires a ton of work. Oh. Like I'm not I'm not talking about moving ready, but like bro, like to the point that it doesn't even have floors. Lovely. So that that's essentially what's happening here, at, at least you know on on my neck of the woods, but. I, this is why I'm constantly saying it's not Gen Z's fault. I'm not giving them an excuse, right? I'm not saying, oh, no, but it's, not, it's not your fault. It. Right. I'm not saying, okay, it's not your fault. Therefore, you're okay to complain. No, don't complain. I understand you, though. You know, I'm in the same yeah, boat. I don't have a house. You sympathize with them. I empath empathize. Empathize, empathize. Because, because I am in that boat. I don't have a house, yeah. unfortunately. But, but um, would you like to know how the government's even screwing them more? Go on. So you remember that um, child tax credit that I mentioned a while back? Go on. Do you remember it? Do you? I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Okay. So they were gonna they were gonna offer round two of the child tax credit. So it was gonna be like thirty five hundred dollars for every single person that has a kid. All this stuff okay. passed the house, went to the Senate, and last week it died. At so the everyone was like. I was like, yeah, you're not getting this. At the presidency? No, it died at the Senate oh. because both parties can't agree because they wanted to use different years of income level to determine the credit, and then neither party wants to give the other party the um, upper hand in it and so close to the election, so they're basically just deadlocked. And last week, they announced that negotiations had completely stalled. Wow. Wow. So it spent two months in the Senate ping-ponging around. Doing nothing. And then, yeah. then, then, then it went to die. So, wow. you know, if people were reliant on that money, well, you're not getting it. Well, you know what? At least they could rely on the fact that uh, Biden wants to give uh, – what, what was it? What was that called? Um, a down payment assistance. For a house, yeah I, <laughs> yeah, I remember that when we covered it. He said that during during the the State of the Union, it, it was in passing. No, a, a lot of people didn't catch it. I love it because a lot of people didn't catch it. Yeah, you, mean you were raging on stream about <laughs> that, well, like that's the because I found the that's, well, that's because I found the article. That's because I found the article, and 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 and, and then you, you just said keep going down, keep scrolling down, and then I just I was just like. I was livid. Yeah, he, he kind of flipped like 20 tables that night, guys. Oh, so, Oh, dude. This is why I would love to just have like a full-blown podcast. <laughs> it would just be me flipping tables the whole time. <laughs> yep. It's just like we would have to like record it so that way we wouldn't have to buy new tables every single time. Just so and that just, way, like, play the right clip, off. Play the, clip, play the clip. Right off. And then for like the specialty occasions, we get a, he gets to flip a table. The IRS is like, why do you guys buy so many tables? You go through like five per month. <laughs> 
It, it's like this is WWE uh, miniature. Yeah, with the with the breakable tables. But let's actually yep. read this a little bit more, and then we could get into the whole gold and oil thing, because this does the whole gold and oil thing does affect this as well. So during the same period, medium medium housing prices surged from dude in the same period from January of 2020 to today. So uh, the uh, the amount needed went from 75,000 income, right? The amount. The amount of yep. income needed went from 75,000 to 110. Medium home prices went from 290 to 412, marking a 42% increase. Dear Lord. Uh, Jeff Atrosky, I think he's your brother, Mike, bank rate housing market analyst identifies, uh, identifies affordability as the primary challenge, attributing attributing it to a record high home values. He emphasizes the difficulty of meeting down payment requirements and monthly payment. Oh, look at that. Particularly as home prices continue to soar. Yeah, and can banks, I, can I, I, I just, programs are even worse. No, 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 I just, I just say that again. Sorry, I was talking over you. Banks uh, lending standards are even getting tighter every month. So even if you could afford it, let's say a month ago, but uh -huh. you didn't have the down payment uh -huh. and now you go to them, they're like, no, nah, you need another 5% down or you need um, this much up front or we need instead of one month of mortgage payments, we need six in reserve, right? No, no, no. So it, they're it's, just kicking, they're making it worse. No, no, no. And, l and let's talk about the, the real elephant in the room here. You ready? Sure. Come on. You know what I'm going to say. What what is what is being said? Look at this. Read, please read this for me right here. He emphasized the difficulty of meeting down payment requirements and a monthly payment, particularly as home prices continue to soar. What's causing home prices to soar? Uh, the lack of supply. Uh huh. Have interest rates gone down? Nope. Uh huh. What's going to happen when interest rates go down? They're going to keep going up. Oh, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> that's an understatement. You know, you, you know that 40%, you'll be, you'll be wishing for that 40%. That's only. why Let's I keep, that way. that's why I keep telling people. That's why I keep telling people. You don't want interest rate. Interest rates should be double digits. You, I'm not you even want joking. It, huh, but you want interest rates to go down because there's a deleveraging event. That's the only asterisk in there. If you have a mass deleveraging event, then you want the interest rates lower but or really you don't care at that point you're just you got a deleveraging event they cut rates they don't cut rates don't matter at that point right but and even if really they do which by the want, way come in come in even if they do cut rate let's just say like interest rates were 10 percent. they cut you 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 take a loan at 10 percent um uh they cut interest rates to just refinance the problem is that the people have to understand that you have to be able to refinance with equity in the home if the value of the house is lower you can't necessarily refinance you have to have enough equity to cover the market value of what the loans are going to be i understand so that i understand that the problem is right the problem is is that um uh, is that you can't have high equity in the home when the prices are upwards of a million dollars no no oh there's that yawn Sorry, <laughs> um, but I'm basically saying like people th think that they can just buy it at the top. I'm like, yes and no, because if the house price falls 100K and then you try to refinance, the bank's going to be like, your house ain't worth 100K and the loan value is like 50K be delta, underwater. so 50K, please. You'll be underwater, basically. Right, Yeah. but but that's my point is that is that interest rates, if interest rates were to go up, right, which is what we, guys, this is what we preach here on the channel. <laughs> this is literally what we preach here on the channel. And I know we're preaching to the choir, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, hopefully mainstream. If interest rates were to go up, the principal of those houses would crash. Therefore, people can actually afford it. Sure, you'd be paying 10% in interest rates. Who cares? The principal's less. Would you rather pay Would you rather pay 1%? This is what I, I always tell people. Yo, uh, when it comes to states like Tennessee, Texas, you know, their sales tax is through the roof. Right? Their sales tax is through the roof. But they have no income tax. Would you rather pay what? Would you rather pay um, ten percent on a hundred dollars, or uh, one percent on ten thousand dollars? I'll take the uh, what you call it, the ten percent on a hundred dollars. Right, because it's less. Yeah, 
it's less, period, than the story. Income always gets taxed more. It's a lower percentage, but it always gets taxed more because the principle's overall higher. The same applies yeah. to this. The same applies to this. You want the principle to come down. The interest rates do not matter. The, what matters the most is interest rates. Sorry. What matters the most is the principle to come down. So let's continue reading on with this because they do go into the states. Uh, so home values are very near record highs. Shocker. Uh, if you want a house, you have little choice but to pay a high price. Oh, boy. Politics time, boys. Yeah. Liberal-run Liberal. states such as California, Massachusetts, Hawaii, Washington require highest income, with homeowners needing to earn between 150. Oh, wait, 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 what? <laughs> wait, 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 what? Wait, 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 wait. I'll take my check in the mail. I'll take my check in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I think they like, uh, oh lord i i did that weeks ago by the way i did that math weeks ago can i drop the mic now <laughs> yeah so between 156,000 and 197,000. conversely states like mississippi Ohio, Arkansas, or Arkansas, Indiana, Kentucky required significantly lower incomes ranging from 63 to 65, meaning they're in line. Actually, they're lower than what it was back in January 2020. Yes and no, right? But they're not describing what type of house, the size of the sure, house, the sure. to the value. So it's a little misleading. Again, there's a margin of error like always, right? There's always a plus or minus, say plus or minus 10%. It's still night and day, man. <laughs> it's still night and day. Even with a margin of error of 10%, it's still yeah, night and cities, day. The cities, you usually have a higher income, right? Right. So it's tr because of the cost of living. So it's, again, it's, it's misleading. Another factor, another factor is the current shortage of houses, with many homeowners who bought the houses prior to the pandemic refusing to sell to avoid rising mortgage rates. So yeah, why would you? Of course. Why would you pay more? Them. Why would you pay? Why would you lock out, lock yourself out of a three percent loan? Especially when you don't when you're not forced to sell, right? Because yeah. in 2008, 2007, 2008, they were forced to sell because of um, well, because of the ninja loans, right? No income. And negative equity. Right. Because of negative equity. Right. Whether, whichever way they got there, right? But there was negative equity, and Correct. the problem is now there's a lot of positive equity tied right. up in these. Right. Right. So this is just taking into account housing, guys. But what's happening with oil? Because that also affects us. Oh, uh, you know, can I just my, to, can I toot my horn a little bit of uh, I told you so. And then OPEC told you to go sod off. Go on. And, uh, um, and then them selling the SPR kind of was the biggest blunder ever because they sold it at like rock bottom prices and then they they uh, have to buy it back even higher it's just i just love it i i, I just love it i'm like huh, let's see uh let's see what uh crew does when i said it was at when we were at 70. do you want me to, no, do you want me to we pull at... you up hang on do you want me to pull you up sure all right just so that way but because i only have this but you have the actual graph so yeah. let me pull you up okay yeah so when we were here I was like, eh, oil ninety dollars, and then eighty five. I said both, and what what happened? Broke out, came down, flagged out, broke out again. I'm like, huh, confirming an A to B pattern, projecting up to eighty six dollars and sixty cents a barrel, and we're at eighty five forty five now. So I'm like, huh, I wonder where this is going. And then for my friend that is not a technical trader, I'm gonna go to the weekly view, and Who's I want that? you to tell me what you see. Who's that? You. Oh, I, you. I know. I know. I'm. I'm joking. What? What? What do you see here? What do you see here? That is called a W. Yeah. So winning. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Winning. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, when this plays out, uh, traditional W, you measure it from the center right here to the neck, essentially. Okay. And then you just like eat it up right here. Um, that would bring oil back to 120 dollars a barrel. Oh, Famous banker recently said $120 a barrel. I, you know, I can't remember his name. Oh, yeah. Jamie Dimon has been right about a crap ton of stuff recently. I can't wait till the earnings report on the 12th. 
I, I, I just want to see JP Morgan. So like everyone else can go, you know, I don't care. I just want to see if we get red pill or blue pill Jamie Diamond. Yeah, or black pill. We could also be, be black pill too. Yeah. I, I'm just curious what we're, he's going to say, right? I, it's like he's turning into the Warren Buffett where everyone is hanging on every last word from him. So, so hang on. I, I wanna, I wanna focus on something. L let me just read a few chats here. Uh, so, uh, next level game is saying, is this six figure total family income? Uh, total family income, you know, yeah, in general, you know. Okay, then uh, Cuban girl saying, excellent job, Robin Hooder. You are, you are right. Affordability is the problem because building a house is really expensive. So for the houses. Uh, so for houses to be more affordable, people need to make more money or houses need to be added to the market. Correct. Or, or you just, or you just make it a lot more expensive so that people can't afford buy, uh, buying houses, right? That would give enough of a time so that way people, so you that way more houses are built. Quell demand. What's that? You can essentially quell demand. Right. Pretty much. Right. Pretty much. Uh, now, granted, it, let me tell you, if, if interest rates were to go to 10%, the second that they fall down, housing will just go through the roof again. You get me? Yeah. But at least it will give enough of a time for people to actually get into it. You get me? Which, by the way, which, by the way, people who are people who are probably saying the Fed doesn't control interest rates or doesn't control the, um, the mortgage rates. Yes, they do. So let's... Uh, a lot of people, I guess we'll just talk in layman's terms. So, guys, the federal funds rate, right? The federal funds rate, it is the, Mike, help me out with this. The federal funds rate, it is essentially the MSRP for the interest rates that banks are, are able to trade with one another. Did I say that right in regards to the MSRP? No, MSRP is what banks would give to you wholesale. Wholesale, that was the, the, that was the, that was the word. Be what the Fed gives the banks. Say that again wholesale or invoice right Sorry. so Sorry. they're they're essentially that's the rate the the banks are transacting money with the fed with and, and with each other money yeah and then they go and essentially give that money to you or take that loan that they got from the fed turn around smack another 0.2 percent on it or maybe turn 2%. around give it to you that depends right uh what, what depends what time frame or 20 percent in some case yeah and because credit then gives it to you and basically says makes the difference. Right. Right. That's why that's why when the federal funds rate goes up, our retail um our retail interest rates also go up. Because yeah. the base is essentially like the minimum wage. It's essentially the minimum wage when it comes to interest rates. Right? That's essentially what that means. Uh if the base level for 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 lo uh, for loaning money is or if the if the base if the base cost for loaning money is 5% then the banks have to give us 7% in order for them to make money. That's basically how that works. So yes, the Fed does affect our interest rates and does affect mortgage mortgage, uh, mortgage loans, car loans, et cetera, any type of loan. Um, if the interest and rates Robert exceed... Heard, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if interest rates exceed 5.5, .5, all the banks will be destroyed and houses would be cheaper, but they will have different problems. Yeah, we're just using we're using the ten percent as an example to kind of exaggerate the um, what has to happen in the market, right? But we covered that article again, several the banks, times. The banks the banks are underwater at two percent, right? In federal funds rate, like and by the way, not just any bank, Bank of America. Yeah, that one, that one's big stinky. Yeah, remember the hundred uh, billion dollars in uh, in uh, paper no, losses it was for? It was huh? one hundred and fifty. Oh, it was one hundred and fifty. Okay. Regardless, now though, it's, it's probably a little bit less because yields have come down, but it's like, okay, 50% loss, 40% loss. Right. On a bank's balance sheet. I'm yeah. like, explain and to me the difference between bankruptcy and then extra bankrupt. Agreed. Agreed. Um, now, so here's something, Mike, that I want you to take a look at. Can you please right. go to the month of, what month did we just end? March. Can you please go to March, please? The entire month of March. And I want to and i want i want to see crude oil from um from uh beginning of march to the 31st of march if possible so you basically you want to see this candle right here this one right here which so. which one am i looking at that little one right there yeah that one i don't know can you please extend the arrow oh. upwards <laughs> here i'll do this 
Do you see the wick on the candle? Yeah. All right. So basically your transacted price. I know what you're getting at. You want to see the transacted price of crude for that time frame. You know where I'm going with that, though? Yeah, for CPI report. Uh-huh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> exactly. The, the video. So, yes, I know exactly what you're doing. Fair enough. Um, so the lowest we saw in March was $76. So we transacted to the upper 25% range of March from last year. Okay. So there is not a chance in hell that you have a negative number. Well, um, I'm going to take you off for a second because I'm going to pull up the the uh, the CPI for February. So right. let's uh, – oh, did I mean to do that? Hang on a second. Okay. Hang on and a then second. I'm also going to do the same thing for the previous month just so we can yeah. see like – Yeah, do, what, it, do what, it for February as well. Yep. So make it yellow. let me show everybody the CP lie because in reality that's what that is. Uh, for February. So right here, this is for February. You know, CPI command 3.2. We already we already know most of this. What I mainly wanted to focus on is that. 1.9% yep. down? Which I could see that, right? If you look at the ranges that was previously do versus you want me to pull you up? traded. Do you want me to pull you up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can do that. You're good. So the month you want to pay attention to is this one right here. Is so February transacted at the median to lower range from the previous year. So depending on how they skew the number, they could either get a slightly negative number to like a shallow negative number, right? Because previously we were like what negative five percent on energy, four percent or around there versus, and we ticked up because there was some transaction of price and a range, but. If you look at where we were for March, we are nowhere near the middle for it. We are nearly or higher during that entire thing. So for me, I'm saying that we're going to get a positive number and then a more positive number in April, uh, which comes out in May. If it continues so, to if it continues to keep going the way that it's going, yes. Well, there's no evidence that it's stopping. All right. So, I mean, Mister 120. Dollar per barrel. That's where that's where we were over here uh, a few months ago. Remember when the whole inflation being transitory, and then Biden was just like, "Release the reserves." Well, that's not how he sounds like. Yeah, but it was, the problem is you ran out, so there's no more release the reserves. Well, to be fair, I I made a poor, uh, I made a poor impression. It, it, it's more like, "Come on, man, release," you know the the thing with with <laughs> with the black liquid, you know. Anyway, what was I, I saying? What was I saying? Corn pop. <laughs> oh dear lord! <laughs> but yeah, no. We could um, go for hours, guys. We absolutely could. Well, we can't because you finished the video, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So that means we could go for hours. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it. laughs> yeah, you walked into that one. No, no. Uh, but regardless, though, guys, we are looking at. You know, possibly CPI coming in, well, not CPI, but possibly energy coming in higher for the month of March. May, I, you know what? I'm going to say, Mike, I'm going to say, Mike, still in the negatives, but like, but like touching zero. I'm saying positive. I'm saying 100% positive. I'm saying, I'm saying like, like just, 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 just point one, right? Point one in the negative. I won't have to wait long. I that's only have to wait a week. That's right, because inflation is uh, or CPI or CPI. It sorry, April tenth, two days yeah. before the earnings for the banks. Oh, oh God. dear! Huh? You know what? We're gonna shift our schedule to Wednesday, Friday for next week, so that way we can not live stream four days in a row. Is it really next week? Yes. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think we'll do that. I think we'll definitely stream, guys, for next week. We will we will stream uh, Wednesday the tenth for CP for for the CPI and uh, Friday for for the for the jobs. Okay, because yep. sorry, not for the jobs. I not for JP the jobs. Sorry, huh? For JP Morgan. For for Just earnings. For JP Morgan. For earnings, we're gonna cover the other yep. banks too, but you know yeah, because yeah, yeah, the following the main, week main show is gonna be JP Morgan. Because the following week, we pretty much have to live stream every single day. On the 15th through the 19th, it's pretty much every single day. Is that Tech Week? No, but it's still, it's still, no, I think Tech Week is like beginning of May, I think it is. But it's still majority of the banks still. 
Really? Yes. Okay. Well, we'll see. But for next week, guys, you guys heard it right here. Uh, we're going to, instead of, instead of Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to do Wednesday and Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, like always. Okay? So, because I think that's going to be, you know, it's funny because, because CPI or FOMC or job numbers ma- matters up until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> until it's, they it, don't get the data they want. Well, no, 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 no. It's not even that, right? It's not even that. It's like it's like this this month is the biggest is the biggest uh, jobs numbers to date. It it's going to change so much, and then when it's over, then the next one will become the same thing because <laughs> it always is. Um. So yeah, but guys, let's uh. That pretty much does it for what we wanted to cover here. Or I guess gold. That was a what question was for you. Sorry. I said that pretty much that's all we wanted to cover, or I guess gold. Yes, gold, gold, gold. Okay, you also want to cover gold. gold. You also want to cover gold. So that's mainly for you. you, Would you like me to pull you up? Yeah. Okay. Now pull them up. And you're good to go. For all those stackers out there. Oh, wow. uh, Is that? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's gold. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bitcoin. Yes, we have been living in Urwok. Wow. In regards to gold. But what, what about silver? B pattern. What about silver? Uh, we'll get the silver in a second. Well, let me finish gold. Um, you've confirmed the A to B pattern projecting up to 2353. So gold's got another approximately percentage wise uh, three and a half percent to go. So it's gonna it's gonna have a pullback when it gets up there, probably, but it definitely has a lot to run, especially with no one believes inflation is coming down, and that's why gold, in my opinion, is running, especially crude. Silver, you know, sympathetic play to it, so confirming an A to B pattern there, too. So simply put right here, A to B, confirm, rotating to $27.82 a, co- a uh, ounce. So um, silver looking pretty bullish right here, and you're actually above the previous swing point right here. So, yay, right? So you, you got, actually, are you above a lot of swing points? Yeah, so you're actually rotating back through now and uh, bouncing. So if you're a silver fanatic, uh, next resistance point is probably 27 flat. And on that uh, 27 and 0.8. So look out for those two values. But definitely bullish on commodities overall, like, you know, crude, oil, gold. Uh, let me take a look at that gas for a second. Yeah, that gas actually finding a bottom around here, so... Could Let's be... hope it continues to go down, though, please. Natural uh, gas is the you... only thing that's holding that's holding my my uh, my uh, my utility bills like in line with everything yeah, else. Yeah, it's not a big enough percentage of CPI for me to care. So yeah, still though. Yeah, but again, oil's gonna take everyone's face off. All right, all right. So that's it. You're good. Yeah. Great. 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 So. Guys, that pretty much is all we wanted to cover. Now, we want to cover one more thing. Before we do that, though, HC, sorry I'm late, overslept. Hey, man, thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. YouTube has been at, I think, Bassomatic uh, left, and uh, Rich is uh, Rich also left. So YouTube has just been very, very uh, quiet. Rumble, on the other hand, killing it. Always killing it. Uh, we got, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, Dr. V saying you are right. Uh, Robin Hooder saying, "If the inter- oh wait, you already with that." Uh, Go saying, "Is it time to play D A Y Z?" I don't know what that is. What is D A Y Z? Or D gas? Uh... Oh no, not D gas. Oh no, I have PTSD with that one. Oh dear lord. <laughs> Let's see, what is D A Y Z? I don't think he spelled it. Oh no, I... did did you did you just say D gas? Ghost D- ghost, because I don't know what that is. Da- uh, Daisy? I don't know what that is. Daisy is a game. I know that. Oh. I don't know. Oh, is it? Oh, Daisy, like uh, End Times. It's oh, time to, uh, like the movie yeah, World War it's Z? it's a survival game. It's like in a world survival, it's survival like, game. Sorry. It's like the movie World War Z, basically. Yeah. Ish. Really? Yeah, it's a game. Okay. Yeah. We're too young for that, man. Come on. 
Or, 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 or maybe I am. I don't know. Mike? Came out when we were like 16, so... No. No. Well, it's a we PC were, we... game. Okay. I, I didn't really do I much. I used to play it. I never I really did PC. I used to play it in beta, but that was a very, very long time ago. I, I never really did PC he, gaming. I think Ghost is referring to real life uh, Daisy, where stack gold, stack silver, stack ammo, and well, uh, stack food. Well, Robin Hood, yeah. Yeah. And land, yeah. Um, Robin Hood is saying gold and Dixie. Uh, how is the Dixie doing, actually? Let's, let's actually... look at the, the dollar. I have not looked at the dollar. Shame let's on me. see how the Dixie is doing. Uh, here, about actually. to rip everyone's face off. And going up. Yep. And yields going. Yields actually reached their highest level in 2024 today. Oh, wow. Yep. I do and start gold and, and silver. Oh. I do start gold and silver. Hopefully lead as well, too, my guy. Lead is also really important. And food and water. Don't forget about food and water. And chickens. Don't forget about chickens either. You know. Technically, that classifies under food and water. And Ghost with his famous question, short NVIDIA. My man. Not Ghost. Not How Ghost. Many times not Ghost. Have to not say? Ghost. HC. HC. Yeah, HC, my bad. I'm sorry. Short NVIDIA many, question mark. Many... Huh. Well, uh, let's talk about hey. let's talk about the company that did fall today. And we're pretty much gonna end it with this. And also, guys. Uh, put the link to the Discord on the chat um, and also the description below just because I know Rumble doesn't... Um, Rumble does not like... Uh, Rumble Links still... Well, no, Rumble d doesn't have like the... Like if you rewatch the live stream, it doesn't have the chat next to it. So oh, can't do anything about okay. that. But today, guys, uh, actually, it was a comment from... Let's... Uh, let me pull up the commenter. I believe it was Serena? Um, I think it was Serena. She comments a lot on YouTube. Shout out to her. Great gal. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Serena. Yep. So today, guys, I put out a video on the company BJ. Uh, I wasn't expecting a lot of views on that one, seeing that, you know, it was very, very... It, it's a low... It's huh? boring. Yeah. It's BJ. It's boring. Well, you know, it, but, but it was a recommendation, so I decided to do it. You know, yeah, yeah, what yeah. else am I going to do, right? So we got a comment from Serena. I think I can pull it up. Uh, so we got a comment from Serena. Sorry. Let's see. Let me. Yeah. I'm just burping. No, I can I'm read sorry. it. I know yeah, you no. can, but they can't. Uh, no, thanks, guys. I have I have never heard of, of this company. I believe she's in like France, if I'm not mistaken. Um, on another topic, I wonder if you're concerned about the news on UNH and the potential downturn in the sector. So this was interesting because I was not paying attention to UNH at all today. Um, to my surprise, it fell a lot. But what's even more of a surprise is that second part and the sector? That's kind of interesting. So take a look at this, guys. UNH falling 6.44%. I mean, guys, okay. Here's the thing, right? If this is a sector-wide thing... Mike, can you please look up XLH? Is that I the, can. Is that but, the ticker? Uh, yeah, but is that the ticker for uh, healthcare? Let me take a look. I'll, I'll look it up as well. Nope. It's not XLH. Okay, okay which? XL. XL, you dummy. I put ZL. No, no. It... XLE? Uh... Let me hang on a minute. I do not know the ticker for the for the spider. Um, I'm pretty sure it's XLH. Is it? No, it's not. Okay. XLB. <laughs> Hong Kong Titans. Okay. XLB. What was it? XLE? XLE. XLV. V XLV. Like, uh... Okay. So, this is interesting because this might be a sector wide thing when it comes to this. Because, well, you guys just saw it. United Healthcare guys fell 6.44%. Now, if you guys have seen my previous videos when it comes to this company, y'all know that this is a unicorn. Straight up. Like, if you guys, in fact, let me just show you really, really quick their financials. Oh, dear Lord. This is. You know that UNH hit your price target, by the I know it did. I know it did. That's why I'm, that's why I'm, I'm paying attention to it. Look at this, guys. Look at this total revenues in the past 10 years. Look at that graph. It nearly looks fake. It looks perfect. And this is the 10 year. Last time we did this, I believe it was in the five year. So on the 10 year, it still looks amazing. That's the total revenues. When it comes to the net income. It, it looks, it looks exactly the same. 
It looks exactly the yeah. same. It looks so fake. I love it. When it comes to the well, we don't have the we don't have the cash flow, but we could just take this really quickly. Let's actually do that really quickly. Um, I, gotta, I gotta pull up the, my thing though. One second, everybody. One second. I'm gonna show you guys the free cash flow because unfortunately, no, no um, thing like this, like Seeking Alpha or Yahoo Finance, ever show the free cash flow because. They just don't for some reason. So whenever we do have our own website that we do have, you know, this um, this available, like all the financials available, we will 100% have a tab or a, or a section for the cash flow. Absolutely. It'll be cash from operations, capital expenditures, under, boom, free cash flow. Because it's just cash from operations plus capital expenditures. So let's take a look at this. And if we take a look at the cash from operations and then we copy the... And we copy this. By the way, Mike, this will be the first time that we look at this in the 10 year. Last time we did this, it was in the five year. So what you're about to see is the cash flow for the 10 year in regards to UNH. Wow. Wow. Okay, you ready for this? Sure. This is the free cash flow for UNH on the 10 year. Wow. <laughs> Straight line. Not, not necessarily. They went down from nine to eight, and then slightly down from four to three. Where? When was that? Uh, when? When was that? When was four and three? <sighs> Let's see. So this is one year ago. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Oh, they they wait. Oh, I see. I see. Their cash flow operations went up slightly, but their capex went up a little bit more than than their uh, cash from operations. And this was going into, uh, or, or actually this was coming right out of COVID. So that does make sense. Um, th that does make sense. So that's their free cash flow, guys. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at another metric over here. Uh, shares of standing, Mike. Since that one's always the killer. But uh, we got, let's uh, AC saying, hi everyone, more tech layoffs coming this month. Probably. Yeah, but they've been but they've been laying off people like constantly. So, um, and then Robert says hi to HC. Uh, HC says it's time to buy U and H. Oh, HC's talking. Our... Wait, where's HC talking on YouTube? Rumble. Oh, okay, got you. And then, <laughs> HC's Robert... like HC's like man, YouTube is dead. <laughs> Let's just go to Rumble. Yeah, he's like, I ain't gonna be lonely over here. I'm gonna go where all the cool people are. Twenty eight people uh, watching on Rumble right now. Dear Lord, yo guys, smash the like button. It really do do appreciate it, guys. I'm sorry. please, please. Yeah. And then uh, Robin Hurst says the problem is that all the migrants go to hospitals and do not pay for services, so they're going to lose moolah. Not necessarily yes because and no. yes and no. They'll just increase prices. They're just gonna increase prices on the people that. Not only Robin that. Hurst, have you ever have you ever gone to hospital and yes. or heard of? like a procedure so let's say you want to go to the hospital and pay cash the procedure is 800 dollars, right just arbitrary number they tell you no 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 no. like if you want to pay cash and it's 800 dollars. that's the price if you want to pay cash right okay. i'm using an arbitrary number so don't not get into the semantics if you want to use insurance then they're going to charge insurance like five grand yeah because they know insurance is going to pay that. Right. So what are they going to do? They're just going to offset the cost of it. So I don't see that they're going to reduce their profitability on top of all the stuff that's connected with a certain topic we can't talk about on YouTube and a certain uh, medical procedure that we can't talk about on YouTube. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Nudge, nudge. But the complications with it, right, that are associated and different things we're finding out, you're going to have a lot of sick people going into the future, which is uh, essentially a cash cow for them. So I don't see that sector, right? I think the whole UNH thing is a little overblown. Well, we'll take are... a look at the news as to why that's occurring, actually, because yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I actually I don't... don't understand it. Um, well, here's the thing. I don't care what the news is, right? Well, it's I, a little I bit important. It, no, no, it, trust me. It's it's a little bit important. I may not understand no, it, but I do I recognize at, it. Very, I look at it like this. This is as simple as I'm going to look at it for two things, right? One, the sector could go down. Yes, I fully understand that. Or the industry. But it, nah, yeah, the yeah. Industry. But I look at UNH, right? It hit the 200-day move, weekly moving average 
at four hundred and fifty dollars today. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If it comes back down there again and hit our price target of four hundred forty nine dollars and seventy cents to around four forty five, that's what we previously established as a range that I was interested in when we covered it. And I'm just like, okay, two hundred base level, clear line in the sand. Why don't I take this trade? So like, I'm, I'm making the executive decision right now to do a quick, uh, uh, just kind of free cash flow on this. Okay. Since I don't have the luxury to just look at a graph and then t and then say it, you get me. Okay. So I already put in all the numbers, and let's see what the what the discounted free cash flow says on this. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna have to. By the way, this is on the 10 year. By the way, well, hang on a minute. This is. Hang on, <laughs> hang, on. hang on. There we go. Okay, so this is on the 10 year. Um, okay. Oh! Oh god! There we go. Okay, this. And then we do. Okay. So, here's the thing <laughs> these numbers are insane, right? Let me, let me do this. Uh, not that one, this one. These numbers are absolutely insane. $18,000? And I did put all of this right. Seriously, this is all right. Did I do it right? Hang on a minute. Not, not, now I'm questioning myself. Dang it. I hate when this happens. This is why I really need this to be automated. Um, oh, I don't think I did that right. Did I do it right? Hang on. Hang on a minute, guys. No, yeah, no. That's not right at all. I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I put... I put... Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Please. I'm not having the greatest time here, chat. There we go. I put in the revenue for the net income by mistake. My bad. Mike, don't say anything. I know I'm what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I'm not paying attention to the futures right now. Fair enough. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this now. So a quick discount of free cash flow on this, guys. It's around a thousand three hundred bucks, right? It's around a thousand three hundred bucks. However, Mike, require rate of return. What do you think? Oh, let's do fifteen percent. Fifteen percent? I was gonna go with twelve, yeah. but okay. Let's do a fifteen percent. Oh. Let's do a 15%. And then, um, what do you think for the growth? In the past 10 years, it's been around 10, 18.5%. Let's assume, let's do like just a standard 10, 15, 20 split. 10, 15, 20 split when it comes to the revenue. So 10, 15, and 20 split. And then for the budget to share buyback, 3%. Yep. So uh, one, two, three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to. Yeah, one, two, three. Guys? This is literally putting us. Oh, at least with the fifteen oh. percent is literally what putting us if they had zero revenue. What, what if was that? It was zero. It was zero no, revenue. Years. No, that don't make sense because even if they, even if they had a bad period of time, they're not going to be zero. Let's do five. Let's see how bad I can make the low assumption. Okay. Oh, sorry. Why is that not working? There we go. Yeah. Okay. So sandwich between. So if you were to say, if you were to say. If you were to say five, let's say five, eight, um, and then 11, right? Five, eight, and 11, based on what the news that we just got from them, um, that might be a possibility. Look at this. Look at this, guys. We are essentially right there. Granted, this is with a required rate of return of 15%. Um, but yeah, this, this is hitting... And according to these assumptions, right, it, again, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So please understand that, right? Please understand that. Uh, the numbers are going to vary based off of, A, the required rate of return that you want from the company, right? B, the revenue that you expect the company to do in the, in the next 10 years. And C, uh, the amount of shares that they're going to buy back or issue in the next 10 years. All of that matters. So there you guys have it. 40590. Um, why is this the same after debt? That should not be the same. Did I put the debt wrong? Did I put the debt wrong? I put the same debt as the... Dang it! I put the same debt as the quick cash and equivalents. Dang it. One second. Mike, I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> you can and slap me. To Robin Hood's question of uh, how is uh, cacao going in the futures market? Um, it was down 1.69% today, but... Uh, they're actively not trading right now just because I believe it's Latin America futures, but yeah. Straight line up. It, it's more bullish than NVIDIA. Let's put it that way. Wow. Yeah, All that right. thing is literally parabolic. Let's get the net debt. 
guys. And then let's see what the actual thing is after dead. So sorry that I got the wrong numbers for that. Uh, is it still getting the wrong numbers? Oh, dear Lord. 42. Why is it not copying? I'm going to have to restart my computer because it's not, it's not copying it. I'm pressing control C and it's not copying it. There we go. Uh, so, okay. After that is 387 to 597. So guys, this just shows that yes, we are at a pretty good buying price right now when it comes to UNH. However, at least from a discounted free cash flow approach, and Mike, you said the same thing when it comes to your graphs? Yeah, because uh, the two... Yawn. It's at the 200 weekly, so that usually you don't come back down to that price unless mm -hmm. you're going to break the chart. And mm -hmm. if you break the chart, then you know you need to get out. So it's a very clear line of denotation. Got you. So here's the reason why <clears throat> uh, UNH fell today. Let me make this easier for you guys to read. Managed care stocks drop after Medicare rate decision. This, yeah, is where you, this is where you say, huh? Uh, Mike? Yeah, there you go. Um, I personally, I read I read a, a little bit of this, guys. There's 20 of you guys watching right now on the, on the, on the YouTube, on Rumble. If you guys could please uh, drop a hint of, um, and six of you guys are on YouTube, by the way. Um, if you guys know what we're about to read, if it makes sense to Mike, if it makes sense to you, if it makes sense to any of you, please drop it down in the comment section below um, or in, in, in the live chat because I... I really would like to know. Also, I Basimatic didn't mean to to skip your comment b before. Uh, to do announce a national lunch program for schools. Nobody asked for it. Nobody wants to pay for it. It just is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's similar to here as well. But okay. So managed uh, care companies were among the notable decliners in the morning hours of Tuesday, after Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services set a lower than expected reimbursement rate for privately run healthcare plans for 2025. I don't know what this is. I don't know what CMS is. Um, I don't know what this, what that paragraph sa says. I really don't. CMS. So, it's, probably, yeah, so it's, it's basically right. Like healthcare plans can get funding from the government basically. So they All right, Robin Hooder, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. All right, Robin Hooder, thank you so much for stopping by my guy. I go. Yeah. So it's basically like it's a refund rate from the government for healthcare providers. So they're offering a service and they're incurring some costs. The government kind of like shelters some of the burden for them. Mm -hmm. So their lower reimbursement rate means that they're not going to be getting as much money, meaning their revenue and their profits could be hit. Okay. But again, they're going to offset it by charging you more money. Okay. I still don't fully understand. I got to be honest with you. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I, I don't fully understand this whole uh, so sense of... Healthcare, healthcare is tied with the government. The government gives them money for every person they service, for certain procedures and stuff like for Medicare, like Medi uh, for Medicare you know, for elderly people, which mm -hmm. is a vast majority of what their clientele is. It's mm -hmm. people that are older just mm -hmm. because people get more sick. Mm -hmm. So they can't charge as much for procedures to Medicaid, uh, Medicare, meaning that the percentage of income from that section of their balance sheet is now going to be less. And it's not a section they can increase prices on because they essentially, how to put it, they're limited to what they can charge. What they can do is basically say, we're not going to cover certain elective procedures or th they'll find ways to skirt around it. But they're gonna, th the bottom line is a value stream of money is shrinking. So therefore, people are concerned about their future guidance. So here's the thing as well. CMS finalized its rate decision for Medicare Advantage and Part D plans. Uh, late Monday, indicating a 0.16 decline in benchmark funding, unchanged from its proposed rule, also known as advance notice in January. Despite the implied cuts, the payments from the government to MA plans are expected to increase by 3.7% on average from 2024 to 2025, the CMS said. The Biden administration's decision to hold payment rates unchanged has surprised analysts, with JP Morgan <laughs> noting that only once over the past 10 years have regulators failed to improve final rates. Yeah, I know nothing when it comes to healthcare, dude. Like, when it comes to, like, I, I, I really, really don't. Like, this is one thing that I, I really do need to learn more about. Like, I have no idea that the government gives 
I didn't know that they, they did that. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not surprised, but I didn't know that they did that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, look at over here. United Health, the largest player in uh, MA market, lost sharply in re- in the reaction. Humana, the second largest, slipped even further as Bank of America downgraded the stock to neutral from um, to neutral from a buy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, just hold on a second. Uh, so Bassomatic is actually still here. Okay. I wouldn't touch UNH until four hundred and forty four dollars. The thing is, like, I would. Well, yeah, we're, we're basically there. Yeah, but. Why is that number? Okay, so you you want to buy? Okay, I see where you want to buy, right? But my thing is, if that two hundred weekly is broken, it's kind of you're breaking the chart. I, I see where you could say you're you're saying that there's support. Like I get it, but for me, I would get a bigger boat of confidence having that two hundred be like a moving target for me. That if it crosses it, I get out. Like that's I just like how it bounced there. That's why I'm saying like it's an interesting buy around the two fifty point. Plus, in regards to me, in regards to the fundamental side of it, there is no difference between four hundred and fifty eight and four hundred and forty four. There's zero yeah, difference. Like you're you're just trying to snipe like we're arguing like what our line in the sand is. Right. But it's still we like again everyone has their strategy of where they think the chart breaks so as long as people follow their strategy it don't matter right as long as you make money at the end if you plan to hold this thing for a long time it doesn't matter if you buy the 444 458 it it really doesn't matter um at least this is the way that i see it because the difference specifically in regarding to uh uh, the dividend, right? What is this yield going to go up to if it goes to 144? I'm uh, sorry, uh, if it goes down to 444. So let's do some math really quick here. If I can find it. Uh... <sighs> Dear Lord, calculator. Oh my goodness. There we go. Um, so if we do a quick math, that yield would then be, so if we do 752 divided by 444, we get times 100. Uh, basically... 1.7. So from 1.54 to 1.7, it's still under 2%. So yeah, this is not I I get what you're saying, but honestly, if you're not if if you're trading, yes, if you're trading or you're swing trading or something like that, I do see the the purpose in holding it to until it falls to 444. But if you're just holding it for passive income like I am, um I don't really see the point in buying it at 444 or 458. Right. If 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 I were to buy the four five eight and it falls down to four 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 or lower, I just buy more. <laughs> That's it. Right. Because my goal isn't the graph going up. My goal is the dividends going up. So, yeah, this is my two cents on that. But um, yeah, this is this is interesting. This is guys thirty one dollars and fifty six cents. Should you guys l- let us know? By the way, let us know in the chats. Are you willing to buy this thing right now? Question mark? Are you? Because I gotta be honest. On my end, I know I said I wasn't gonna buy anything, but my goodness, <laughs> you're contemplating it. I'm contemplating. At least just, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't afford to buy. I don't want to buy half a share. You know, I don't want to buy half a share. But at the same time, it's like six point four four percent down. <sighs> you're killing me, Smalls. We'll you're killing me. I I'll, I'll wait and see up until um I wait and see how much the hospital bill was, um, okay. so, which by the way guys that's a little bit of a hint hint, hospital bill. Nothing uh nothing bad happened, so but still hospital bill. <laughs> I'll be right back. Well, guys, I mean we're pretty much going to end it. But I um, I'll be was, right back. All right, fine. But guys, uh, that pretty much does it when it comes to the um, when it comes to everything that I wanted to talk about today. Now, before we end, though, before we end, I did promise a whole lot of you that uh, I would um, I would release um, a Discord channel today. So let's do that right now. I have no idea how to get the link. <laughs> Just give me one second. I have no idea how to get the link for this thing. Uh, but when I do, I'll just post it in the chat. Okay. I'm back. Mike, how do you get the link for the Discord channel? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> that's yeah. a great that's a great statement right there. Uh, oh, wait, in chat? 
Huh? You want me to post it in chat? Yeah. I think it's this. Well, don't just put something. Send, send it to me first. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> send it to me. I don't know what you just. Okay. Uh, is that is that ours? Yes. Oh, it is. I How'd you do that? Off the, I copied it off the Discord chat. You copied it off of the Discord chat. When you sent it to me, you sent me the link. I did? Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Okay, well, I don't have that. So, oh, okay. okay. Uh, then I'm going to copy it, too. Uh, I'm going to copy it, too. Uh, so that way I can post it on the, on the link in the description. Right? So that way y'all can have it. And now I can't copy. Hang on a second. There we go. So, yeah, guys, there is the Discord for the channel. I, as I promised, we were going to do that. Let me. Okay, you already, you already posted it on um, on YouTube. Uh, I will also leave it, guys, in the link in the description below, just so that way, you know, if you guys are watching it, if you guys are watching the the vod, y'all can um, y'all can also get it there. Uh, so this is Fatal Investing Discord, guys. Try to be try to be cordial. You know, I don't like um, I don't like um, you know. Just, just, just try to be cordial. If I see anybody being, um, being rude or like, it's fine to disagree. You can, you can disagree, but do yeah. respect. Yeah, just, just, just be, be respectful. You know, we don't have any, any, I guess, uh, boundaries, not boundaries, but like walls in, in regards to like who's able to come in or not. Um, if we have to put up those walls, I will put up those walls, and I will kick people if I have to kick people. You know, um, I am all for free speech. But in regards to the, uh, in regards to, you know, this kind of stuff, yeah, I'm not going to tolerate, uh, I'm not going to tolerate people calling each other, uh, you know, names. Well, I, I, I wouldn't even say names, but just, just, just be, be respectful, you know. You guys want to talk about crypto? You guys talk about crypto. I have different channels here. You know, there's the channel for options trades, there's a channel for buys and sells, dividends, earnings, that kind of stuff. But, you know, just keep it cordial, Okay. So there you guys have it. There you guys have it. Am I putting the thing? Okay. Um, and the general chat is just the g general chat. We will expand on this as time goes on. By the way, for everybody on YouTube, would you guys also like me to set up a gilded um, uh, uh, channel as well? Because gilded is for people who got banned off of Discord. So if you guys would like gilded as well, I could just make the exact same thing for gilded too. Tell me if you, tell me if you guys would like that on the... On the Rumble end, or even on the YouTube end as well. So yeah, let me. Okay, so I did I add the thing for Rumble? Oh, let's see. Can healthcare industry ever get injection it did in the last? Can the healthcare industry ever get the injection it did it did in the last four years? Um, let me tell you, more and more people, Bessematic, are becoming more and more old. So most likely, it will continue to occur. Right, and I'm just saying old people because that's the largest amount of risk demographic, right? Um, we so have an aging population, so right. you're, yeah. So again, gr a growing aging population. So again, more and more people on a basis is going to keep getting sicker. So. Right. Right. Uh, let me actually guys also put it, also put that link in the, um, in the rumble in the rumble description as well, just so that way y'all can have it. Um, see okay hang on we're almost about to end with the stream guys i do want to do a, a raid discord channel no sorry fatal investing discord discord there we go and uh, i'll probably also make guys um a gilded channel as well if it's the same way i may as well do it just so that way, if any one of you guys got banned on Rumble for for saying for saying the truth, y'all can come to Gilded, and then you guys can just chat in Gilded as well. So yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's what pretty much going to end it, guys. Markets. Let's see. Markets today. A quick recap on how the markets did. Ninety five percent down. Oh, sorry. 0.95% down on the NASDAQ, uh, S&P down 0.72, Dow Jones down 1%, uh, 
Uh, crude oil Mike uh, ended down 0.12. Gold spiked up to 1.5. And Bitcoin is now to 65,331. When it comes to futures, we can see that gold is up 1.5%. Uh, silver is up 4.3%. Absolutely great. That's why Rich was just like, silver. Oh my goodness, silver. No, it's and, not. Huh? That number is not right. Well, I'm looking up futures my end. If it's not yeah, correct, then it's not correct. 4% is not correct. Okay. Well. I, I, look, I'm looking at Seeking Alpha. You have the correct one. So, you know, what is it? Uh, point 4% was the previous day. I'm, so, seeing it, I'm seeing it move now. It just went from 4.3 yeah, to 4.28. Yeah, they, it's 0.21. That's what it's up right now. Okay. So it was gold. Okay. Well, there you guys are. They're 0.21. Um, yeah, they're... They're pulling the percentage from the previous day. Got you. Is uh is the is uh futures for the three for the three yeah, indices the red? Yes. Okay. But they're um they're red by point one versus those numbers. Point one. Okay. So essentially, yep. so I mean it's close. I mean point away, point one, same thing. Yeah. All right, guys. So that pretty much does it for this live stream. Uh, thank you so much for watching on YouTube. It really does. Uh, I really do appreciate it, guys. Let's see. How many people did we end on YouTube? Five people. Shout out. Uh, let's see. Bestomatic saying, in my family, 100% of the people who got a a every injection has had cancer up here in the last 12 months. Correlation does not equal causation. I am forced to say that because, um, well, obvious reasons. Um, I cannot be alone. I fear the rage from the public as corruption gets exposed. Corruption is a. I know exactly what you're telling me, Bassomatic. I know exactly what you're telling me. Um, and, you know, we're not allowed to say it, but in regards to that topic, yes, we do agree. We do, we yeah. do fully agree. I kind of hinted at it when I covered uh, a section on the video. Got you. Got you. So, yeah, uh, we, we fully agree. Uh, are we going to get the exact same uh, injection when it came to, you know, the, the thing that happened in 2020? Probably not. But my point is that I don't think it's going to go, you know, I don't think it's, it's not going to, going to go away. People will always continue to get sick. You got me? That's my point. So I don't, you know, if the industry itself, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, healthcare in general will fall apart. It just, it just it won't. That's, that's not going to happen, right? The powers that be will lobby the government to the point that they'll continue to exist even if, even if we have a centrally planned economy in a way when it can, when it comes to that sector. You got me? So, Wait. what's that? No, fully agree. Yeah. So, guys, uh, shout out to the five of you watching on YouTube. Bassomatic, of course, HC, and Rich, which is no longer here. And um, on Rumble. Rumble definitely was the big one today, like it usually is. 27 people watching. I think at one point we got 31. Shout out. Uh, shout out to, of course, HC, Robin Hooder, which is out ghost. Let's see who else. Uh, uh, Dr. V, Cuban Girl, Next Level Gaming. I'll probably stop by your stream. Like, I don't know if you're still here, but I'll probably stop by your stream later um, in a few hours when you start streaming or if you do uh, if you do a stream today. Uh, Ghost Walker, shout out to you. Uh, Freedom Otter, the freest of otters. Gotta love you. Uh, you know, straight from the Otterman Empire. Gotta love it. And uh, guys, that pretty much does it. Um, YouTube. We, you guys can pretty much, actually, I'm, I'm going to end it on YouTube. Rumble, stay here because I want to raid somebody. I want to raid somebody since we got 26 of you guys watching right now. I do want to raid somebody. But for YouTube, thank you so much, YouTube. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Again, next time, guys. Well, tomorrow we'll have a video for 4 o'clock. Or, Mike, when do you usually put your video? 9. Okay, 9. Um, we'll have a video for you guys tomorrow out at 9 a.m. And, and Hans is late. Hans is late. So we'll have a video for you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, right, right before market opens at 9.30. And the next live stream will be on Thursday. And we'll reiterate this again on Thursday. But for next week, our live streams will be on Wednesdays and Fridays to cover CPI as well as the... What was the other thing that was going to happen? And banks and bank earnings. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I just hit my, my desk. So for YouTube, that pretty much does it. Rumble, do not go anywhere. YouTube, that pretty much does it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.